I'm Jamie Shelton. I'm from Troop 551 in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. I'm Patrick Shelton, also from Troop 551 in King of Prussia, PA. We're driving down the Pennsylvania Turnpike at 9 o'clock at night, and we see a, an accident happen up ahead. After the car had been impacted, it went airborne over the side of the road, flipped multiple times, debris exploded everywhere, and, and it rolled over the guardrail and out of sight. We hopped over the guardrail and started going towards the sound of the screaming down the hill. We discovered a man and his nine-year-old daughter screaming that his wife was trapped underneath the car. I'm thinking, we have to get her out of there as soon as possible. And with only four people to lift up the vehicle, we had to do everything we could to make sure she got out. I had, did not think we'd be able to lift it, but we got it up just enough that she was able to crawl out from underneath the wheel. The man starts screaming, oh my God, where's Carly? We're all unaccounted for. I asked, well, who's Carly? What are you talking about? And that was his seven-year-old daughter who was nowhere to be found. I, I started running back up the hill and I started to hear very faint uh, moaning. I saw a little girl leaning up against the guardrail. So I ran over to her, pulled off my sweatshirt, gave it to her to treat for shock. She said immediately that her legs felt frozen. She couldn't feel anything. I just talked to her to keep her from going unconscious. From the accident, she was taken in an ambulance to Abington Hospital, and then once they realized how critical of a condition she was in, she was airlifted to CHOP. We had to go down the embankment again to rescue Peggy, who had been trapped underneath the car. I had to hold her head in a stabilizing position before the paramedics were able to put her on a backboard. It was my training from Boy Scouts that had told me the first thing that you do in an accident is you don't think about anything else, but you think about making sure the person is stabilized and that they get help right away. The accident happened in October and Carly was in the hospital from that day all the way through the end of February. And we found out that her entire lower half of her body needed to be totally reconstructed. I thought um, if I had moved her or tried moving her the night of the accident, I could have almost ripped her in half. So she needed to go through extensive surgeries and operations and she needed to learn how to walk again. After the accident, we met them the following March and they were very grateful that we helped them. But we were very happy to see that everybody had made a recovery and was out of the hospital at that point. Carly may never walk properly again, and Peggy will always have pain in her in her hips and in her uh, neck, but everybody survived, and it was just nice to be able to see that what we did ended up with a positive result. Seeing Carly just look in almost reverence that if this, this total stranger wasn't there, that she might not even be alive to be having any of those experiences, to live a full life. The look in her eyes, was, it was very powerful. My scout training taught me to think of nothing else but the victim's safety first. The victim is the most important person, and you have to make sure that they get help. You have to make sure that if nobody else is doing anything, then you have to be the one to do it. If we had waited those 10 minutes for the paramedics to arrive, uh, Peggy could have been crushed by the weight of the car, or Carly could have gone unconscious from no one finding her on the side of the road and could have died on the spot.